Hello, I'm Andrew Morris from Sigillum Seals, and I thought I would uh, do a brief introduction to the seals and the different materials that uh, seals are made of. And as a collector and uh, someone who's been involved with seals for a long time, it never amazes me the variety of different materials that uh, makers have made the seals of. So today I'm going to show you some, um, some of these seals, different materials that they've used. And I hope that when you go and find seals when you're collecting, you'll find some materials that perhaps I haven't mentioned. Um, but by all means, get in touch with me uh, if you do, because I'm fascinated to see new materials. I suppose it's, it's probably a good idea to say that in my experience, seals from medieval period up to modern day have been made in a whole range. Medieval seals, tended to be made in a limited um, range of materials. And typically what one would find when you're collecting is you'll find seals like this, which is a fob seal made of bronze. Typically late medieval period with a suspension loop at the top, literally to hang from a chain, made of bronze because that was, um, that was a valuable metal, but it was very, very good to, to cast from. And this one has a, a, a matrix on the base, as you would um, imagine. This one has actually survived very, very well, and the engraving is still very clear. But typically, that would be one that I would expect to find from the medieval period. If you were a person of uh, some substance, then you would probably want to show that in the way that you wore clothes and the items that you carried. One very good way of doing that would be to carry a fob seal in silver, a more precious metal, obviously, the same but different type of suspension loop. Again, this one has a, a matrix on the bottom in very good condition. And so dating from around 1600, or before that probably, 1550, 1600, you can then see that those two materials would be typically found for that period. Rather than go through in date order, let me just go through some of these, some of the different materials. So in this shape, this kind of mushroom, mushroom form, I've got two materials to show you. One is an agate, and this one is a, a very, very attractive and quite seductive um, striated agate, striated meaning well, with lines running through it, of various colours running from, well, what's that, I don't know, it's a kind of a creamy colour all the way to dark grey. But in the same sort of style, this one here, which is a typical mushroom uh, shaped handle seal from 1700, that just shouts 1700 to me, and that's formed with ivory, which has to be made normally in two parts, connected to a silver matrix. They come in other materials. Wood is another material that this one would come in. Ivory at that time was very plentiful and more valuable. So it, the, the silver matrix ones tends to be mated to ivory. Whilst we're on the subject of ivory, ivory was, was widely used in in England. Strangely, it was more English than any other European country in my experience. If I see ivory, I think instinctively of England. This one, for instance, is uh, an ivory handle connected to two matrices, one at each end. One has a formal armorial, the other end a crest. Both for the same person, but it just gives that person the choice of which or how formal he wants to, to sign his letters. Well, let me show you this one. This one is the image uh, of a fish with a matrix on the base, but you'll see the, the light refracting on that, which is, uh, which is instantly identifiable as mother of pearl. But mother of pearl was used a lot for um, seals, particularly held by ladies and pocket seals because of its nature, because of its beauty, um, it's, it, it's, it's closely associated with ladies. Uh, this one here 
is of, again, you could call that a mushroom form. But this one here is absolutely stunning. Uh, this is a seal by Lalique of, again, a fairly similar mushroom form. But Lalique, particularly known for their development um, of glasswork, but this is one of their patented iridescent um, finishes which has been applied to a seal. And again, you'll see in the close-up just how this one shimmers in the light. Absolutely stunning. This one here is uh, 19, uh, 20th century, early 20th century. Still incorporating a similar sort of style though. It does, the style doesn't change much over the centuries. Again, if I take this one here, which is similar style, although the matrix has got a, a faceted edge there, the same sort of style. This one is horn. You can tell it's horn rather than wood because of uh, the depth, you can actually see into the material. Again, it's a, it was a fairly popular um, material used um, by the English and the Germans. This one here has a checkerboard effect on the top with ivory and ebony. The silver matrix, a light, nice combination there. If I pick this next one to show variety of material, this is a, a bit of a whopper but this is um, cut crystal. And this one here is slight, it's called sm smoky crystal because it isn't entirely white. It's got a smokiness to the color. Um, and this one has a simple crest as the matrix. But what a beautiful form that is. Doesn't have to be quite as ornate as that, but they chose to. Don't forget that these were daily tools. If you wanted to impress, you would show that status or what you wanted people to think of you by the type of seal that you had on your desk. So this would indicate to somebody that they were of some means. Now I've got a couple of examples here of swivel seals. Swivel seals come in a multitude of different, different um, methods of holding the matrices, matrices and the metal used in their formation. This is um, a more of a fob seal hence the suspension loop there. And this fob seal is made of gold with a carnelian. Carnelian is red, red color matrix stone with a set of initials and a crest above. So it would have the owner's initial and he would have this on a chain and it does secure by a spring loaded there we are, a spring-loaded um, fitting there, which fixes it, but on being released, it will then spin again. And on this particular model, he's incorporated on this little end here, um, a key winder for his pocket watch. So that's a, a simple spinner. Um, slightly more um, complicated would be one with three faces, three different matrices. These were very, very popular because it enabled the owner to show or to seal his uh, letter by whichever of the three was most appropriate. So you would typically have a formal matrix showing your arm or your arms. Then you would have one which had just the crest, your crest and your initials underneath, typically. And then the third one would be just initials. So family, family, very close friends would know you by your, your initials. So you had a choice of three. This one belonged to a lady. Uh, this one is lapis lazuli, gold, and turquoise stones set in the gold with little turquoise beads on the, the end of the hinge here. I mean, it's a very, very attractive little seal. Small, but perfectly formed and would have been carried um, by the lady as a, as a pocket seal or probably you know, within a purse or that, that sort of thing. Whilst we're talking about lapis lazuli, let me show you this one. This is a small desk seal. I think this is probably too big for a pocket seal. It's certainly heavy and a beautifully faceted um, or fluted um, lapis lazuli um, handle. Lapis lazuli is blue typically with flecks of gold within it. So the light catches the gold, especially on these uh, fluted edges. Um, so uh, it's a beautiful, very tactile handle that with the, with the fluting, leading to 
a, well, we could only describe it as a heavily decorated gold uh, collar and mount. I mean, it is gorgeous. It's lovely. Solid gold. Then leading to the matrix, the image of a boar standing on top of a Roman fasc fasces. It's iconography. It's relating to the um, items of war and that would be their crest. So this seal was only used to, to show the crest of the owner. To be fair, if a, an owner had a seal like this, uh, of this size, of this value, because it would have been an expensive item, uh, I can only suppose he has a larger seal which has his full armorials on. Some owners who are very, very fond of their pets would have the image of their, their pet as the seal handle in particular and this is a wooden handle which is easily carved and so if you had a bulldog and you're particularly fond of uh, the dog then why not have the image uh, put onto your seal and this little chappy happy chappy well actually he doesn't look very happy but um, he is um, a very very well engraved uh, little chap with a brass collar which has been fashioned as his collar. And then that tapers to a, a brass um, matrix with his initials, uh, the owner's initials rather than the dog. And uh, this is um, a really sweet early 19th century seal. Um, and one which is highly collectible because of the fact it's an animal. And the dogs probably being the most collectible. I will just mention this one. This is a, well, it's quite a whopper of a seal. It's very substantial in its weight. And that is because it has um, this wonderful carved agate handle of, um, it's, it's very streaky. It's streaky with browns, caramel to black. And then that tapers into what can only be described as a big lump of cast silver with a, Carnelian matrix. Now this lump of cast silver is not something that would have been, well, it wouldn't have been cheap to make and it wouldn't, have been, it wouldn't have been easy. It's been remarkably well done. And I would say it would, it would have been probably um, customized for this, this owner. It shows a hunting scene with dogs and boar, uh, I suspect because of that, the owner of the seal was very keen on his hunting. The arms show full achievement of arms with two crests, and one of the crest, crests shows a boar, and he has a motto at the base. So it's, it's got it all. We know something about the owner because of the hunting scene. He's got a boar as part of his arms, and it's heavy. So it would have been a, you know, a, a, the man's seal, for his desk, not the ladies. Again, it says something about the owner. One of the um, other topics that we, we do include within our collection, although we don't focus too much on them, are rings, signet rings in particular. It was just one of those things that we never really got into. There are plenty of collectors who, who specialize in signet rings. We do have a, hand, a handful of them. This one here is, um, it's, a, it's an old seal. This one would be, this would be about 15th century. To be honest, I'm not sure on the metal. It is unlikely to be gold. It doesn't feel quite heavy enough for gold. So in, we would call it yellow metal because unless one can be sure of its, of its type, you, one would call it yellow metal. So let's just say it's yellow metal from that period which features a matrix of a bird of prey with its wings outstretched. Another ring which, which is in the collection is this one here, which is a silver, a silver matrix and ring, which depicts the Lamb of God in the center with a, an inscription or circumscription, which is a reminder to that person of the importance of God in their day-to-day -day life and they would wear it simply as a memento. It just so happens to be my ring. Um, I, I wear it um, because it reminds me of my father and uh, I, I treasure that one myself. 
This one is one of a number within the collection which concentrate on hand holding a seal, which is always an interesting concept, and a, and a cuff. So our collection has a number of these, or armoured arm or armoured leg. It was a fashion in the um, late 19th century, and this one is ivory, gold, bloodstone, with a bloodstone matrix, and within the hand, a ring on his little finger, which has a little garnet or ruby. And then on each of the ends of the seal that the hand is holding, you have um, a little flower in carnelian at that end, a flower, yep, there we are, another flower on the other end in green. Um, so it's not emerald, so I'm not sure of that stone. But these would have been expensive to make. Um, this one is more of a pocket size, in fairness. Some of the ones in the collection are, are big. They're big desk seals, but this is small. So this could well have been a pocket seal. Actually, before I go to that one, I'll just mention that whilst the collection has some 4,000 seals within its ranks, we also have a, a significant collection of stamps. Uh, so these are stamps which are um, carved the opposite way, which take an ink impression for stamping as opposed to a wax impression. We have a range of stamps covering a period from, say, the 16th century up to modern day. I, I really like this. I like the, the form of this. This is a wooden handle connected to a brass matrix but it's remained in good condition, which I really like. And the stamps, unless you have collected stamps or seen stamps, I would urge you to at least look at them because I, I rate stamps highly because they're not collected so much. And yet I find them equally fascinating. This one here is a monster, but it's actually a stamp. And this one here is for this particular brand of olive oil from Grasse in uh, Provence. And this would have been used to, to stamp probably pats of uh, soap or something like that. But I would encourage you to, to have a look at stamps because it's, um, it's, a, it's a topic which is rarely seen, but I find uh, very, very interesting. And finally, um, because it's a phenomenal seal, I will just mention this one, because this one here is a, a silver matrix, thick band of silver, which has been attached onto a steel handle and collar. And it features the full achievement of arms and a circumscription. You can see just how elaborate the carving is and the texture that's achieved on just individual feathers on the birds. I think I like this perhaps just for the aesthetic look of it rather than because of the, um, the person that it belonged to. So that is, I mean, that is an official seal. It would take a lot of wax to, to take that. Um, so it would have been used, um, well, not very often, but it would have been an important seal. So I hope that's given you some ideas to different types of material that are used within seals and stamps. If you have a um, seal or stamp with the material that you're not sure what it might be made of, or you have one that you think is um, different and rarely seen, then of course we would be delighted to, to, um, to see a picture of that. So please get in touch with us, send us an image, of your seal and uh, we can then talk about uh, what material it might be.